Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus today. Thank God for another opportunity to come and to praise God to share with you the blessed word of God. God's word is good. Praise God. And he's good all the time. And I thank God for this opportunity. He's the answer. As Andre has so wonderfully stated, Jesus is the answer to all our problems that we're facing today. And once again, I you know, I know there are so many solutions that have been given to try to help us through this pandemic and uh, through the rioting and all the confusion that we have today. Uh, there are many, many answers tearing down the statues and so forth and praise God. Uh, but, you know, we there's a hard problem here. It's not so much the removing of that which uh, visibly reminds us of the hurtful past that many of us had to endure, uh, the solution to our problem is a new heart, a change of heart. And I know no other person that can help us in that category, but Jesus Christ himself. He is the answer. Praise God. Once again, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby, uh, Pastor of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. And so glad to be coming to you once again. And we're presently studying uh, some of the prayers of Jesus from the beginning of his ministry even to the very end. Uh, we uh, Today we're looking at prayer number 18, I believe it is, prayer number 18. And uh, it's found in John's Gospel, the 17th chapter, uh, verse 24 through 26. Now, we've been in this, we've looked at three other prayers of Christ in this chapter. This is a great chapter. Praise God, the high priestly prayer of Christ. Unlike that uh, which he taught his disciples to pray, this is uh, a prayer coming from the heart of Christ himself. And so far, we looked at three other prayers in this 17th chapter. Uh, first of all, Christ prayed for protection for his people that we might be kept from the evil that uh, is all around us, the evil that stalks us each every day. Praise God. And then secondly, uh, Christ prayed for the sanctification of his people, that his people might be sanctified, that he is separated from sin, separated from this world. Praise God, because this world is going in the wrong direction. So Christ prayed uh, that his people might be separated, called out, and uh, might live a life dedicated to him. Thirdly, we looked at uh, a prayer of Christ where he prayed for unity, unity among his people, that they might be one. He said, even as we, Father, we are one. And uh, praise God, we realize how important that is today, that we say the same thing, that we uh, believe, and uh, that we stand firmly upon the word of God, and not uh, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, as so many people are today. So today we're looking at that last prayer in the 17th chapter of the book of John, uh, verse 24. In that prayer reads, Christ says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, he says in that verse 25, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and have declared unto them, I have declared unto them thy name, he says, and I will continue to declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So now, in this prayer, Christ prays that he prays that his people might be with him. Praise God. When all this, all this is over, praise God, Christ wants his family. He wants us to be with him. And I count it all joy to be a part of the family of God. One of the called out ones, the born again believers, praise God, a diehard believer, believe the word of God. If God said it, 
Praise God. It's true. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. I don't question the word of God. I believe that every word, every word is inspired by God. Praise God. So Jesus wants his family to be with him, he says, uh, and behold his glory. Praise God to be and to live in the presence of God. Oh, it has to be the greatest, the greatest occasion that anyone can experience. Uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 16, I believe it is 16 and 11, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And it says at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And that's what Christ asks for. He wants us to be with him forevermore. And so we can experience his glory. Praise God. And I tell you, I'm, uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength right now. This is what, this is what carries me through this world each and every day. I have the peace that pass all understanding. I have the joy of the Lord down in my heart, deep down in my soul. And, uh, praise God. But Christ prays here, here that uh, we might be with him and behold his glory. Praise God. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to it. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for them that love him. Praise God. Those that accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Praise God in his presence. We'll find out that there will be joy and peace that we never experienced before. But that's what Jesus prays for here in this 24th verse. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. You know, I I I I, I should never forget uh, when Queen Sheba came before uh, the great King Solomon. Praise God! Uh, she said uh, these words. I believe in First King ten, uh, ten and eight. She said these words: Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Oh, praise God. What an atmosphere. King Solomon, he's a type of Christ in many ways, but uh, uh, she observed how happy uh, Solomon's servants, his people were uh, in the presence of this great king. Now, if this kind of joy uh, was exhibited before a king here on earth, just think what it would be like. When we stand before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, praise God, what happiness and what joy will be there. See, what we have here now in the way of peace and joy is only a down payment. Praise God. We just got an earn. The Bible called it earnest of the spirit. That's all we have now, just a little bit. But if, if what I have now is just a little bit, praise God, I'm excited. I can hardly wait to get the whole deal, the whole package of joy and happiness that God has in store for his people. Praise God. And I thank God that the Lord, he's not going to be satisfied until his family those of us that in this world have confessed him as our Lord and Savior, those of us who have stood firm upon his word in the face of opposition, in the face of ridicule, praise God, we have not turned from our faith. We have kept the faith, and therefore he won't be satisfied till, till he has all of his blood-bought children. Praise God in his presence, and I'm looking forward to it. And the, the Bible said we'll forever be with the Lord. Praise God. I thank God that he's coming personally to take us to be with him. He's not going to let that uh, uh, task be put in the hand of the angels. Praise God. He's going to split that eastern sky. And one day the Lord's going to come back and he's going to call my name. Praise God. And I, I'm going to answer him. I'm going to say, yes, Lord, I am ready to go. Praise God. But Christ says he wants his family to be with him, that we might behold his glory. And then he says, uh, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me from the foundation of the world. He said, Father, you've loved me. You loved me before the world was. I love my children. I want my children to be with me. Y'all mothers and fathers out there, you know, we, we, we love our children. But our love cannot be compared to the love that Christ has 
for his church. Praise God. And I'm excited about that. In that verse 25, he said, O righteous father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Praise God. He says here that uh, the world, the world has not known thee. Uh, in other words, see, the knowledge uh, 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 that Christ give of himself is not the same knowledge that the world have of Christ and of God. Because, you know, people in the world, they say, well, I love the Lord. I love God. I love Jesus Christ. But now there is a knowledge, and Romans tells us about that knowledge that some people have of God. Uh, Romans 1, uh, familiar passage scripture, 1920, uh, the Lord said, because that which may be known of God is manifest to them, but God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal Godhead and power, so that they are without excuse. So there is a knowledge that God's going to hold the world responsible for. Because God said, I've revealed myself to them uh, in, in through nature, through the things that they see. Or oh, you'd have to be just completely off your rocker not to be able to see God in this great creation. But now, the knowledge he gives to his children is different. Praise God. He has revealed to us a, a knowledge of himself that's so much different, praise God, than that of the world. Praise God. He sends his Holy Spirit into our heart. And the Holy Spirit, when he comes to his people, that is the ones that have played, put their faith in Christ, he opens our blinded eyes. Hallelujah. And we know him to be real. Praise God. And we can do nothing but repent of our sins and ask God for forgiveness for the sins we have committed and ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart to save us, to live in us, to lead us, to guide us, to teach us, and praise God through this, and, and guide us through this wilderness, this sin-laden world with all of the problems we're facing today. Praise God. I thank God this is not my home. I'm, I'm just traveling through here. Praise God. I'm on my way home, though. Praise God. In that 26th verse, that last verse of that 17th chapter, Christ prayed, he says, I have declared unto them thy name. Talking about his people, me, me, and you that are believers. I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. The love of God, hallelujah, has been shed abroad in my heart, hopefully in your heart, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. He wants the love, he says here, the love wherewith thou hast loved me. I want that same kind of love to be in my children. Praise God, brothers and sisters. I think all of you would agree with me. What the world needs now, says Miss Dion Warwick, is love, sweet love. Praise God. In the midst of so much hatred today, it's not of God. It's not the enemy, the devil himself. He's loose today in the world. He's reaping havoc upon this community, our communities, and upon the world in general. Why? Because there's hate and there's not love. Hate is not of God. Love is of God. And praise God. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, and now about his faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. What the world needs right now is love. And guess what? The Bible said God is love. Christ is love. And we need Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Will you accept this love today? Praise God. It's here. It's available to each and every one of us, accepting Christ's love today and becoming a part of the family of God will cover all of your sins. See, love covers a multitude of sins, the Bible says, and it will bring us, most of all, into the family of God. Who praise God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the most Hi, God, and I thank God for it. Praise God. You know, I, I think about that song when we were in uh, Bible school when I was a kid and we learned a long time ago, said something like, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. 
very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. It was love that lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. And I want you to know God loves you today. And I pray, God, that you'll accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. Praise God. If you like this video, I encourage you, praise God, to go over to that subscribe button over there and, and hit that subscribe button over there. I mean that uh, like button first and then go to the subscri subscribe button and hit that button over there. And uh, praise God. And, 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 and when we come back again, God's will, uh, you'll be notified. You'll be notified and you'll be able to tune in and be blessed once again by the power of God. Praise God. Until we meet again. May God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer.